comment about the debt ceiling. How are you thinking through this? Well, I think they'll work it out. I think that there's going to be some compromise on both sides. They need to, spending's out of control, and they need to start cutting spending, and they need to prioritize how we spend our money. But I think that Speaker McCarthy and President Biden will ultimately make a deal, um, and this will, you know, hopefully be put to bed for the next three years, because that's what they've been talking about as well. But do you kind of ignore it then? I mean, just as it, whether it's looking at this from an executive or investor or whatever point of view, I mean, are you just literally keeping your head down and, and just not paying attention to it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's more static. It's more noise. Um, the fact of the matter is that the speaker and the president are not going to let the country default. Um, we are not going to get to that point. They will compromise, and they're working diligently to do that. And uh, I don't think anyone on either side of the aisle would want to see our country paralyzed and 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 does not be able to pay our bills and Americans suffering for that. Sure. I mean, it's going to be hard to ignore it completely when it's unclear if this is going to play out over a week or maybe four weeks or eight weeks or, you know, we'll see. In the meantime, then, what is the most important thing to focus on? Well, I think they're focusing on what is happening in the economy. I mean, interest rates have um, chilled the economy. I mean, they're having devastating impacts on commercial real estate, um, as Jamie Dimon indicated. Uh, that's going to create some significant stress on local and regional banks. You know, not everywhere, but in major markets around the country, there will be significant uh, stress in those sectors um, because these banks are making 80 percent of the development loans in their markets. And so as a result of that, there's going to have some serious stress coming. And, uh, and that's not just on the development loans, but on the acquisitions and repositioning uh, loans as well. But there's a lot of stress in that sector, and uh, the worst is yet to come. And I think we're going to see some other banks in trouble. So, you know, I was struck, obviously, we we're all following the news with PacWest. They're doing what they can to offload some assets, now offload a business that was focused a little bit on kind of residential real estate investment. Um, so are banks being proactive enough here? I think that they're trying to figure this out because they were making loans at lower leverage in sectors that were performing very well with good, strong fundamentals, um, especially on multifamily residential. And because of this rapid rise in interest rates, what was a very strong sector is now in trouble. And I think that they're trying to figure this out and with the hope that things will stabilize and some um, are being more proactive in selling off their assets um, in places where they think are, are trouble. But the buying um, is going to be at much lower prices. And next year, we're going to see a lot more as these interest rate caps start burning off on these commercial real estate loans, multifamily and office buildings. Yeah, we've actually jumped from one topic to the other. While everyone's aware of the pain in office, the pain in multifamily could really just be starting. You know, the big stat is that we had the most uh, apartment supply come online last year in, I think, 30 years. So do you think that's going to end up being as big a problem area as office, which has its own pandemic issues? Yeah, I think the apartments, so there's a there's a continued demand for it. And as the housing market, the for sale market continues to tighten up, there's a greater demand for rental properties. The pro problem is the fundamental investment decisions in the beginning that got that are going to get people in trouble. Um, apartment buildings were selling at below 4% cap rates. So the expectation of those buyers were that interest rates were going to continue to stay low or they were going to have moderate movements. But they didn't. They more than doubled now. And as a result, these projects are no longer fundamentally sound, and you can't move rents quick enough to offset it. So I think those types of investments are going to have some trouble, but mainly in the private lending community, as Jamie was mentioning. Right. And also, I think you'll see it, you know, with the funds that have made, um, you know, PE funds that have made equity investments and MES loans in those places. I think their equity is going to start getting wiped out in those places. Yeah, and it may be, you know, quote unquote private, but uh, when it bubbles back to pension funds or, or the rest of it in terms of losses, obviously there, there will be an impact. This is the first time we've heard from you since the bank collapse in March. And the Fed officials, you know, they've continued to raise interest rates. They sound somewhat constructive on it. You sound a lot more concerned, I, I think it's fair to say. Um, do you think that Fed policy should pause, that the economy is going to end up being much weaker than, than is currently appreciated? Yeah, I mean, I think the Fed was too hyper-focused on consumer spending and not enough focused on what the overall ripple impact. I mean, if you think about the commercial office building sector, and how that was fundamentally changed as a result of COVID and remote working. It was already struggling in some of the cities like New York where there are high tax and there were businesses leaving. But once COVID changed the way Americans went to work, that uh, created a great deal of stress. 
And then now to double the interest rates on those assets, they basically are, are many of these buildings have no way to survive. Many of these property owners, you're seeing some of the strongest companies um, in the commercial office building sector, their stocks have plummeted and they're defaulting on loans. I mean, if you look at Vornado, you look at SL Green, they are in the epicenter because they're New York City focused and they're office building focused. Stocks down significantly and they're beginning to talk about selling assets and giving them back to their lenders. That is an example of what's coming. By the way, but they're not the only office building owners. So the entrepreneurial firms are smaller and the regional uh, property owners and so forth, they're going to start having greater stress and they're not going to be able to hold on. And so 2024 is going to be a very, very uh, tough year for this sector.